Welcome back to another edition. I want to talk a little, little bit about, I guess a lot about, <laughs> in this session. I want to talk for the whole session about something called the Nasruddin Project. Um, and whether you are a consumer of uh, financial therapy, financial planning, or you're a practitioner, I think this is going to be of interest to you. Uh, so if you're a consumer, uh, maybe don't uh, turn off the podcast right away because what I'm going to be describing is a gathering uh, and a non-organization organization of a bunch of planners and therapists and coaches that um, I think has relevance to you as a consumer, and of course it has rel relevance if you're a practitioner. So I think there's a little bit uh, for everybody here today. Now you probably have never heard of the Nazarene Project. And if you haven't, that's pretty understandable. Uh, <laughs> the Nazarene Project uh, um, has been called a um, uh, like one of the best kept non-secrets in uh, the financial planning profession. Uh, they don't have a website. There isn't an organization. They're not a 503c or, or, or an entity of any kind. They don't have leaders. They don't have a board of directors. Um, they get together once a year and if nobody hosts a gathering for the next year, the, the project's all done. So every year is the beginning and the end of the organization, so to speak. If you Google it, which I did today because I also wrote a column on this, I could only find three things written, maybe four, on the Nazarene Project. Uh, one was, I think, in 2002 by the Wall Street Journal. There was a article by Mass Mutual, I think, in 2018. Uh, somebody has a Facebook posting, and then I have written or blogged on it, I think, in around 2014. I blogged when uh, Sarah Swatner and I had attended the Nazarene Conference at that time, and it was her first. So... Uh, what what is this uh, secret society that doesn't really try to keep itself a secret uh, necessarily? It's um, as I said, a leaderless, eclectic, holistic group of financial planners or financial life planners, if you will. Uh, therapists that have an interest in uh, uh, finance and emotions and money, authors, educators, coaches, and um, every once in a while we get somebody who's none of the above. Basically, the organization was started in 1995 by Dick Wagner and George Kinder when they were experiencing this uh, phenomena um, that, in the, the way that we framed it back then, is one third of our clients. We, as planners, we put together these beautiful financial plans. They did exactly what the client wanted them to do, and we would deliver this wonderful advice, and a third of the clients wouldn't do it. And this was uh, frustrating to the planners because they they did exactly what they were asked to do. And they got thinking, especially uh, Wagner and Kinder, that maybe there's something else going on here. Uh, maybe there's some emotions. Maybe there's some psychology involved in money that nobody to that date had really addressed or thought of. So uh, it was actually in 1995 at the ICFP retreat 
that Jacob Needleman and Olivia Mellon spoke to that retreat on emotions and money. And I think that was the first time that it, at any national retreat, this topic had been uh, somewhat addressed. And so it was that same year that the two of them founded the uh, Nazarene Project. And the founding of this project was pretty simple. Uh, Dick Wagner sent out a, uh, I don't even know if it was an email at that time, a fax maybe, <laughs> to uh, all of his friends, which were about 30 or 40, and said, hey, uh, come join me at Estes Park for a discussion, basically on emotions and money. And so a bunch of people showed up, and that, that was the start of something that was uh, rather big, certainly big in the way that it has influenced the financial planning and financial therapy um, professions. Uh, this year was the 27th gathering, continuous gathering, uh, in a row of this uh, particular project. Um, so it has really resonated. And the work that uh, has come out of this little leaderless band of eclectic uh, financial and mental health professionals interested in the intersection of money and emotions has um, impacted the, the profession uh, exponentially uh, when you measure it toward its members. And to be a member is pretty, <laughs> pretty easy. Um, I like to say you, you, you have to have a, a heart and soul for emotions and money and be able to fog a mirror and write a check for 50 bucks. Uh, that's pretty easy. <laughs> so, um, this, uh, so, so what is it? What is it about this group? What is it about this gathering that uh, makes it so incredibly unique. Well, like I said, uh, the, the one thing that makes it unique is that it's not organized. So uh, the organization basically um, is limited to, right now they have a Slack channel in, uh, for what, 25-ish years, it was a Yahoo group, right? So just a glorified uh, list server where they will have some online discussions, but the real heart and soul of this group is it's meeting once a year. Um, and the, and basically when they come together, it's um, the, the philosophy is everybody that is here should be here. And this is a one-time gathering that will never happen again. And when the meeting is over, it is over. And it's over to the point that if nobody hosts or offers to host a meeting the next year, that the, it won't happen. The, the, the reorganization of the non-organization won't happen. It's done. Um, so so this, uh, this is typically a, a three-day event. It usually will start on a Thursday evening and run until Saturday evening and, and everybody goes home on Sunday. It's typically held in a, some remote location, um, some rural type location. It's been he held here in the Black Hills twice. Uh, this year it was to have been held in Kentucky at Dale Hollow Lake. But uh, because of the outbreak of the Delta variant, it was held virtually, which was its second year in a row, of course, of being held virtually. Um, so the, the magic kind of starts on this Thursday, uh, Thursday night, where they uh, get together and do uh, what's called open architecture 
architecture planning. And what that means is um, everybody gathers, they have dinner, then they go to the, the, the main gathering room. And if you have a topic that you would like to host, if uh, there's a topic you're interested in that you don't know much about, <laughs> you offer a session. And you get usually about a minute to, to pitch your session. And um, it's not unusual. There's maybe 40 or 50 session, sessions pitched. Uh, these sessions are not uh, formal sessions. They're not formal presentations. Uh, occasionally there's been one, but but not very often. Uh, PowerPoint is rarely used. You know, um, maybe a, a pad or a whiteboard might be used. Um, but typically nothing like a PowerPoint. Because these are, this is more of a think tank. These are more discussions. These are more very uh, interactive. So the group gets together. They put up all the sessions. And then uh, everybody gets, depends on the year, depends on the host. Five votes, six votes, seven votes. Some people cheat. <laughs> and uh, they vote for the topics that are of uh, uh, the highest interest to them. Uh, the top vote getters are then arranged in tracks for the next two days, usually a 90 minute breakout session. They're usually tracks of two or three presentations. And uh, this is now the format of the conference for the next two days. So if you think about this, in probably a two or three hour period on that Thursday night, they plan a two day conference. Uh, the topics are picked and the topics are something of interest to everybody there because they're the, the top vote getters. And all the speakers show up because, <laughs> because the speakers are the participants. And I have uh, sat on many, many um, uh, committees in charge of uh, retreats and conferences. I've headed up the, uh, the F FPA retreat once or twice. And literally months goes into planning a conference and coming up with the topics and finding the speakers. This is all done in two or three hours. So it is just phenomenal because the topics that are, are I mean, usually there, there's way more interesting topics than, than you can get to. And if you present a topic or two like I did uh, this year, then, then you can't go to those that are up against you. And usually I find myself wanting to find somebody else to take my session so I can attend the one that's up against me. So um, they're, they're highly engaging. Um, this is absolutely the best retreat that I go to uh, every year. And I go to, I don't know, a half dozen uh, various conferences, maybe, maybe some years even a dozen. Um, so it, it's, it's a, a, a phenomenal um, uh, conference. Um, so, it, it, like I said, it's more of a brain trust. It's more of a think tank. It's more of a place for super cutting edge uh, topics uh, within the holistic financial planning community. Um, and I, di I didn't... Uh, talk about uh, how this <laughs> group got its name. Um, uh, Dick Wagner and George Kinder named this the Nazrudin Project after a mythical wise fool of Middle Eastern folk folklore. And uh, this um, there, there's a lot of different uh, jokes and anecdotes uh, written by Nasrudin. 
And I think the the one that's usually told at the Nazarene opening is that a Nazarene went into a bank, and and you already know then that these have been modified over time, right? And the uh, teller said, um, uh, Mr. Nazarene, do you have any um, identification? And he looked into his satchel and kind of messed around. He finally pulled out a mirror held it in front of his face and says, yep, it's me. Um, now, uh, what, what does that have to do with this group? I, I think basically the name suggests that the group takes itself uh, rather lightly. Um, it um, it doesn't take itself too seriously. But don't confuse that lightheartedness with a lack of sincerity or passion around the holistic view of financial planning, which binds all these people together and rather deeply. Um, usually in the opening circle, there'll be a number of people that, that will say their closest friends in the world are, are part of this group. Uh, some people have been coming for almost, well, since it got together 27 years ago. And usually there's a pretty good contingency. I would say a third are new attendees uh, every year. And it continues to, to draw people. Why? Well, th th this group, as I have said previously, is uh, known for spawning thought leaders that have been very influential in forwarding the holistic financial planning movement. Uh, many authors of uh, just scores of articles and white papers and and a half dozen or more books had their start here. Uh, there's been uh, leaders of uh, various financial planning organizations that came out of the Nazarene Project, educators, um, the founders of movements like the Life Planning Movement and Financial Therapy had its start in the Nazarene project. And I think that's the first reason that this may be important to you, uh, a listener of a financial therapy podcast. Um, I remember giving discussions around what is financial therapy. And I specifically remember one that I gave where I said, I want to talk about financial therapy. And that it was just, nobody knew what it was. <laughs> I, and I don't know that I knew what it was. And I, I remember asking people, what, what does therapy mean to you? And it, it was like there's 10 people in the group, and every person had a different version of what the word therapy meant. And uh, many, many of the exercises and uh, tools that have... Um, uh, appeared in, in books like Facilitating Financial Health, all had their testing ground at the Nazruden Project. Um, so, so this group has, has uh, been fundamental to the uh, birthing of so many things, like I said, including financial uh, therapy. Um, what else can I tell you about, um, about this particular group? Um, I think I've alluded to the fact that there's, there's no PowerPoints. It's a discussion. Um, and th as you probably have already guessed, the topics covered are not the latest, uh, income tax code update, uh, what's new in estate planning, um, uh, the newest software for doing financial projections or anything that's usually related to what we call the exterior of money. Um, 
basically traditional financial planning. It's not, it's not a place for that at all. That doesn't mean that somebody couldn't offer a uh, session on some of this. It just means that nobody may show up. <laughs> they have uh, a, a number of uh, guidelines, and one guideline is the law of two feet. And that means if a session isn't working for you, leave. And uh, create your own session. Um, sometimes there's sessions going on in the in the uh, out on the lawn or someplace else that uh, sometimes are as interesting as as the uh, uh, voted upon topic. So instead, the topics that are covered here is a, are a broad range of interior focused topics. Uh, what a person thinks, feels, and believes about money. And it's a wonderful place to go to learn what is probably going to be um, in the future of, of um, financial planning, financial therapy, financial coaching, you know, all of these particular things. For example, some of the topics covered this year included some uh, presentation on virtual versus lateral thinking, uh, transition fatigue, mimetic desire. I had, to, I had to Google that to figure out what it was. And that was the session that was up against me, so I can't even tell you about it, but I heard it was, was really good. Uh, wisdom and money. Um, there was one on financial infidelity this year. Um, another on conscious consumption. Uh, and, and there was a whole host. <clears throat> These were just a few. I, pre I presented on IFS Informed Financial Therapy, which is the first time in any oh, a national level that I have presented on this particular topic, which is not new to listeners of this podcast, right? And then I did a, a session on all of the various uh, life planning, um, workshops, certificates, uh, certifications that are available right now, which when we started 25 years ago, there was absolutely zero, right? Um, you know, another really interesting thing, and, and as a consumer, you know, I... I would uh, be getting curious about this group of people, right, that are drawn to this. It sounds like they have a lot of heart, a lot of passion about this. Well, and the heart and the passion about this is helping people make sound financial decisions, going the extra mile, going uh, with people where traditional financial planning and planners don't go to really help them um, uh, resolve their financial uh, problems, to really help find solutions that are really solutions for them. And it's kind of amazing because there is no CE credit for any of these people, any of these professionals that show up. There's no agenda. They show up without an agenda. They have no idea who the speakers will be, what the topics will be. And so, of course, being a non-organization, there's nobody to file any CE credits. Um, and in this day and age, to have a successful conference that offers no CE credits has to say a lot about the value that these professionals are getting by coming to this. And many will say, this is the most unusual professional group I have ever attended. So um, why? Why was this important for me to tell you about? Well, first of all, if you are a financial professional with the heart and soul um, uh of doing planning, a financial therapist. Um, this is a, um, a meeting you may want to check out. 
uh, usually a lot of people say um, when they've been here the first time they found their tribe. For you that are consumers of, of this, I think it's worth knowing that there's a group of financial professionals that, um, that operate at this level of advocacy and heart and soul and, and care. I once was at a, a meeting of, of how to uh, run a meeting with open architecture like the Nazarene Project. And there were several of us. Uh, that were Nazarene members at this this training. And some of the other folks at the training that had nothing to do with financial professionals, when they learned what we did and who we are and, and the care we had uh, for our clients, I remember one said, you guys are an amazing secret. If If people knew financial professionals like you existed, you would have a line out your door. So this, this is the type of gathering, this is the type of person, this is the type of professional that actually exists in the world. And hopefully you can find someone like this to help you, uh, guide you on your financial journey. Now you might be saying, "Great! How how can I how can I find a list of Nazrudin planners or therapists?" Well, you can't. <laughs> um, there is no list that exists, uh, and most of those that attend regularly, it, it, they don't even think to put it on their resume or on their website. Uh, probably you're going to have to just ask your planner or financial therapist if they've ever heard of the Nazrudin project. And if they have, you are probably in high probability that you're in good hands. Um, so that's uh, that's what I wanted to, to lay out today. And um, if you are a financial professional with the heart and soul for emotions and money and are interested in the Nazarene Project. You need to find somebody who's a member and uh, they will send you uh, kind of a uh, informational email with everything that you need to know. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I had for today. I'm uh, really grateful to this, this band of wonderful, wonderful uh, professionals that um, just have a heart and a soul for helping people and um, helping people really make sound financial decisions and looking much, much deeper than the dollars and cents. Because we know it's not about the money, right? So thanks for joining me. Take care. And I look forward to chatting with you next week.